Okay guys, here's a quick run through of how easy it is to set up a 2 or 3 multi-sig wallet with 2 passports, a Blockstream Jade and a Sparrow wallet. So I'm going to click on new wallet and I'm going to give my new wallet a name. Then I can click create wallet. Next up, change the policy type to multi-signature and Sparrow will default to a two of three, but using these sliders here, you can adjust that to your preferences. Then we have three empty key stores for each of my hardware wallets. So let's go ahead and add the first passport. So I'm gonna choose air gapped hardware wallet, and then I'm gonna choose scan on passport. That's gonna open the camera on my laptop. And over on my first passport, once I'm logged in, I'm going to head down to Manage Account, Connect Wallet, Sparrow, Multisig, and then QR Code. And then I'm just going to hold these QR codes in front of my laptop's camera for Sparrow to read the required information. Okay, so there is our passport number one. I'm just going to add a number one to it so I can distinguish between the two. Let's add our second passport. Process is exactly the same. There we go, now I have passport number two. And let's add the third key store, which in this scenario is a Blockstream Jade. So on the Jade, I'm going to head to Options, Wallet, Export, XPUB. Here you may need to change the configuration to multi-sig as it does default to single sig. Once you've done that and you've got the animated QR codes being displayed, just hold those in front of the webcam. Okay, there we have our three signers. So our multi-sig wallet is built. All we need to do now is press apply. Then I'm asked if I want to add an optional password for this wallet file. Next up, Sparrow shows me the descriptor for the wallet and I can choose to save that as a PDF, which I will for offline backup. Okay, so the wallet is set up and as you can see, we have our first receiving address available to receive. But before we do that, we need to go ahead and register the multi-sig configuration file onto each of our devices. So let's do that with passport number one first. So I'm going to select the key store, choose export, find passport from the list, and then click on show. Then we have an animated QR code that represents the multi-sig configuration file ready for passport to read. If I skip forward to the next step of the Sparrow connection flow, you'll see that Passport now wants to scan the multi-sig configuration file from Sparrow. So all I'm going to do is hold my Passport nice and steady in front of the QR codes, and in a couple of seconds, my Passport has read all the information and it then reads it back to me on the screen. Once I'm happy with all of that information, Passport will save the multi-sig configuration file and then finally, it wants to verify a receiving address from this new multi-sig wallet. So to do that, I'm just going to close out of that screen, click on receive, move forward through the next couple of screens on Passport, and then scan the receiving address QR code. And as you can see, we have a perfect match so that our Passport has verified that the address being displayed by Sparrow for this multi-sig wallet is correct. Next up, I'm going to repeat that exact same step for passport number two. So settings, export, passport, and then I'm just going to scan those QR codes. Once again, passport shows us the multi-sig policy. Once I've verified that, my passport wants to scan a receiving address. So I'm going to bring that up on Sparrow, scan it with Passport, and there we go, another perfect match. Over on the Jade, I'm going to head back out to the main screen, and I'm going to choose Scan QR. 
And then once again, just like I did with the passports, I'm going to go to settings, export, and this time I'm going to choose Jade Multisig. Once again, we have a series of animated QR codes, and I'm just going to scan that with the Jade. Just like we did on Passport, the Blockstream Jade will read back the Multisig policy to you. And you can then choose to register this with the device. So all three devices have been connected to Sparrow and all three devices have now had the multisig configuration file, sometimes referred to as the descriptor, saved onto the device so that they're able to securely verify, receive and change addresses as part of transactions. Okay, so some time has passed and I have now just sent a small amount of Bitcoin into this multisig vault. So let's look at how we can spend out of this vault now, where we require two of a possible three signatures. And for this demonstration, I'm going to use both of my passports to sign the transaction. So I'm going to tap on send, paste the address that I want to send to, then give the transaction a label. Then I can enter the amount to be sent, uh, but in this instance, I'm going to send the entire amount. Choose my fee rate with the slider and then click create transaction. You can see a summary of my transaction details here. When I'm ready, I can click finalize transaction for signing. And here we have uh, two empty spaces that represent the required signatures. So let's go ahead and do that with our first passport. To do that, I'm gonna click on show QR code, which is gonna give us a, a QR representation of the unsigned transaction, which I need to scan with passport. To do that, all I need to do on Passport is click on Sign with QR Code and then scan the QR codes that Sparrow is showing me. Passport will then relay the transactional information back to me. It will show me the send amount and the destination address, the change amount, if any, the network fee, and then it'll ask me if I am ready to sign the transaction. Once I've done that, Passport will then show me an animated QR code series which represents the signed version of this transaction which I need to scan with Sparrow. To do that all I need to do is click on the blue button that says scan QR and then just like we did earlier hold the QR code up to my laptop's webcam for Sparrow to read the information. And there we go as you can see we now have one of the two required signatures so to get the second one we just need to repeat that exact same process so I'm going to click on show QR code on my second passport, I'm going to choose sign with QR code and scan the QR codes that Sparrow is displaying. Once again, my second passport will relay the exact same transactional information back to me. And then once I've signed it, it will show me the animated QR codes representing the signed version of the transaction. Over on Sparrow, I'm going to click scan QR code. And there we have the required two signatures and we are now able to broadcast the transaction. The first transaction from our multisig vault has been sent and we should now have a zero balance. Quick note on our multisig backups. Obviously this video assumes that you have already got your three devices set up and initialized, each with their own seed word backup. But with a multisig wallet, we should also back up our multisig configuration file, sometimes called our descriptor. With Sparrow, there's many different ways that you can do that. We've actually already completed two of those backups by exporting the multisig configuration file onto each of our Passport devices. So Passport will hold a copy of those and has the ability to export them at any time in the future. But it also makes sense to have a physical offline backup of our configuration file or descriptor to protect us in a scenario where something were to happen to both of those devices. So I'll show you how to do that in two ways on Sparrow. We're gonna to come to settings, then click export. And then we're gonna export the Sparrow backup file. Now what this will do is create a backup file for our Sparrow multisig wallet. And with this file, we can reconstitute this wallet into any other instance of Sparrow on any other machine. 
However, if in a theoretical future scenario where you're unable to obtain a copy of Sparrow, it makes sense to have a more universal backup of our multisig wallet file as well. To do that, up near the descriptor section, we're going to click on this QR code icon. And that's going to show us our wallet descriptor, which is the universal Bitcoin standard for multisig wallets. And then I'm going to click on save PDF and save that to an external storage medium. Let me just quickly show you what that PDF file looks like. There we go. We have a static QR representing our descriptor and then, of course, the long text version of that underneath. Now, this might look like a lot of gibberish, which to most people it is. But all you need to know is that this information here is exactly the information required to reconstitute view only access to your wallet so that you can see your balance and then construct future transactions.